Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Spooky here, uh, and here we have today a place for Bitten. It's um, this PSX style horror game. I saw that the, the dev was given away from free, so shout outs to him. Um, I saw it in the PS1 horror demo disc um, that I'm planning on going through eventually, but I think this is the full release, um, and so I figured, let's go, let's do it. Dude. PSX visuals. Like, the second you give me PSX visuals, it really does, like, get me, man. But, you know, I think... Let's just, let's just speed run. Okay. A little bit depressing. Cool logo for whatever this place is office I guess what kind of person buys filing cabinets and then does not file things in the cabinets they're monster they're filing cabinets definitely didn't fall asleep in my chair well I guess he didn't because he'd be up right now visitor log greetings visitor you're more than welcome to sign your name and the date of your visit in the guide yes but once you've done that we welcome you to explore the library to our your heart's to the content so long as it isn't after closing. Once you've had your fill, please get yourself out. You'll find a key in the front door on one of our desks in the study. Okay, that's, uh, is that it? I guess that's it. Okay, so. I guess it's a library. Who knew it would get so foggy? Who knew it would get Silent Hill PSX foggy out? In this non described town. Hmm. It's a strange thing. I can't remember what it was about or who was it who was ascended. Greetings, visitor. We'd like you to take a moment to tell about our wonderful library. The Library of Ouroboros is a state of the art facility designed to replicate the rural charm found in many older buildings without the associated risk such buildings are known to accumulate. The buildings might seem like a strange sight amongst Wall Street's many towering skyscrapers. Really the dichotomy will be what sets us apart. We're glad you just Hmm. Well, Peter, we're glad that you've decided to give us a chance and hope that our stock of books will appeal to you. Obviously, our collection is of information isn't so vast as to encapsulate the whole of the internet. But we hope that the charming aesthetic design of our library will help you escape from the hustle and bustle of New York life. If you hear any strange footsteps, don't worry. I mean, don't worry. There may still be construction going on above or below you from us all things. Well, I am not in New York, so... From all our staff, welcome. We're glad you're here. The library is located in the picturesque part of Britain. Mm, okay. At top of grassy knoll east of Sussex. Many rural townships obviously bereft of their own libraries refer to the villagers to the library. It is beloved by all. Peruse our vast stock of fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and everything in between. Chat with friendly librarians and employees and feel free to spend as long as you'd like reading using our computers or spending time here. We always love the visitors. Did you hear any odd knockings in the corner of the building? Pay no mind. The library is on the older side and the foundation plays tricks on some visitors' minds. Don't worry though, it's perfectly safe. Oh, okay. Um, something tells me it's not perfectly. One sec, before I get that, I think my computer's not done. I I was imagining it's the. Oh, it's not this. Okay. Three digits too short. That, I don't know when that was. Orboros, a circular sim a snake swallowing its tail. A representation of the endless cycle of death and rebirth. The wholeness, the infinite. A certain kind of cloying meaninglessness. Never put much stock in mysticism, but this place is pasted all over the goddamn walls. Tough to avoid that. Last I remember, I was on some occult website sitting on the farthest end of the internet, past the place that they normally dissuade the less curious. I had just a little too much time on my hands. I remember falling asleep, and now I'm here. The recording said that the place is the Library of Ouroboros. I remember reading something about that, but not what or where. If you're reading this, keep an eye out. Something isn't right. All the words are crossed out, and the pages are stuck together. I can't open this any farther. Mm -hmm. Peace be to you, friends. We're glad you've decided to join us. Despite its name, the library is open to all people of all sorts of different faiths. With our vast tracts of religious knowledge, modern, old, and otherwise, you're certain we will find peace you seek. 
We know you've traveled far to arrive here, so please do rest. Keep an open mind, read to your heart's content, and we'll be sure you're well provided for. One matter of note, we ask you not linger after closing or descend too far into the library's bowels. Some of our books are quite old and very sensitive to the ingress of foreign temperatures and moistures. Thank you for your understanding. You know, a couple of these messages would be normal, but all of them? Except. Hello. Welcome to the library of Aroboros. We're glad that you decided to visit our Man. humble institution. Hopefully, Man. you'll find what it is you're looking for. That is. Please be informed that the library is closing. Since most of our staff are currently away, please lock the door on the way out. You just leave a cell phone for this, brother? Just leave a cell phone in case there's one dude to read it? Thank you for lizarding. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for coming. You can go now. That's <laughs> that's kind of funny, actually. You can go now. Please go. Okay, well, I'm outie. It's been fun. Lore? Can't do anything about it right now. Let's leave. Okay. We're out. We're not out. Um. Answer, answer the call. We'd like to inform you that the library is now closed. Note that it is unlawful to remain on the premises after closing. This is your one and only warning. Oh, that was definitely up like two seconds ago. Oh, fuck. That is, uh, it's pretty good. Ministry. Okay, let's, how long is this? Fuck it, let's read it anyways. The Minister's Doom, Act 3, Scene 2. Bernice enters, followed closely by the librarian. Bernice is breathless, looking at cult exasperating slightly inside. The librarian's expression is unreadable, as per usual. My husband will find out about us, so he won't stay out forever. I wouldn't be so sure, my dear, but wish how we were tired of the living room for her to speak to such unpleasantness as your husband? She, her face suddenly breaks into a grin. She stabs the librarian's hand, taking him to the couch beside her. Fine, if you're here to stay. If you're to stay, I want to hear some of those secrets you keep talking about. You can't play me like the fool forever. Oh, she grabs the librarian's hand. Whenever Clint do such a thing, my dear, would you care to hear about how I can stop a human heart with but a word? It sounds dangerous. It most certainly is. I wish to hear it, then of course you shall. He leans close to Bernice, who closes her eyes as if expecting a kiss, but the librarian leans past her, whispering something in her ear. Bernice's eyes open wide. She gives a single jerk, a strangled groan, and goes limp, sliding off the couch. Too curious for her own good. He stands, reaching one of his pockets for the girl, a single black case containing Bernice's wedding ring. Taking a cursory look around the living room, the librarian eventually focuses on a single point on the opposite side. He crosses the floor, leaves his item, and turns to leave. As he does so, the scene darkens, leaving only a single spotlight to illuminate the stage. It is fixed on the small black case, which the librarian has decided to leave, seeing it's not the minister's writing desk. Uh, that's a little. I'm just gonna read the <laughs> one last thing. I've since tried to find the student who first contacted me and tell her what I learned. My hope was that I might be able to put her mind at ease, or at least commiserate with her, but I've been able to find her. In fact, since the day she visited my office, her roommate haven't seen her, nor has anyone else, and I fear I might be next. Okay. I, I feel like they could have textured this a little bit better. I wasn't there, I don't think. Um, yeah, that is a time. Hmm. That is a small lamp. The note is largely obscured by blood. You can make out only a handful of words. And one of the dustier books fell apart in my hands. There were these arcane scribbles, feels. After I threw it away, it's not quite right, like something's watching. I don't know what it says. Scribbles, not a real word on this page. The chess pieces in the thing? It feels like I, I should be able to pick the. I don't know. Too smart to be legible. Okay. How about you? No? Okay, you were still a terrifying fucking noise. Paper equal parts smudged and illegible. Is that a door? Is that, a, is that it looks like a Minecraft mine. Am I wrong? There was is there a window or something? Okay, okay. Um, I guess we're gonna go say hi. 
Holy shit. Um, let's go check the books out, you know? Let's go see everything that's not that... Dude. What the fuck is this? It's like a fan? That's your... a desk? Okay. Dude, I hate when it fucking... What the fuck was that? Definitely slightly different than where I was before. I need some way to remove the padlock. Okay. I need a way to remove the padlock. Can't help but feel as if I stand before the precipice of some terrible reality. Left one room only to come right back to it. Chain, there's no place to go but straight ahead. I pinned a few tools in this room in case the path ahead isn't what I hope it is. If you're not here any more than good news, the path ahead is at least immediately is probably safe. Zero chance of any hostile entities. Hostile entities. Um, hmm. If they're still here, though, well, I hope they're useful to you. To you. You might need all the help you can get. Maybe there's only two of them. I'm fucking so... Yeah, same chair. The fuck? I am. Is there, is there a run button? I uh, I should not have read that short story. All right, I think whatever the fuck that was, it told it's telling me I'm no longer reading stories. This is that screwdriver. I don't know if I can. Wow, that's so dude. You guys are so hard. It's so good. It's so easy to get me fucking off the edge. And I, I assume I can't break the padlock with this. I oh, is there any controls? Holy shit. Uh. Let's hit the field of view just in case there's something we're missing. Ooh. Um. Okay. I did not. This is a different tree. Okay, nothing in them. Let's check these. Anything? Okay. That is still a nice painting. It's still a good painting. Um, these windows, anything on these windows? Yeah, this is definitely different. They were like, just like a fence or something. Definitely trees going that way. Um, maybe the book changed. Anything over here? It's paper. Oh, that's wrong. Don't let it, kids. That's wrong. Let's see if we can find a trash can. There's one. Okay. There you go. Oh, let's do two more. And then at that point, it's not even. It's not even. It's not even our litter at that point, so I won't feel that bad. Where is, I mean, there's gotta be another tool. Padlock, how the fuck do I break the padlock with a fucking... Just checking to make sure there's no equip button or anything. Okay. There's a code here. No idea. Dude, there were things on that desk. There was a toy knocked over. It's so easy to get me. Okay. 
Well, nothing changed. I swear to God, those books weren't there. Maybe I should read this. Today, my student came out of the office one spring afternoon with a sack of papers in her arms. She said she'd be having strange dreams of a place stretching forward and backwards into infinity. Dreams of hallways splitting into hallways. Dreams of being lost in the intricate guts of some gigantic place that could not possibly exist. On the papers were crude sketches, but she was no artist, she said. But something about the dreams had left such a vivid impression on her that putting what was into her brain on the page seemed her only option. She was clearly distressed. When I gently suggested she visit the university psychologist rather than the resident ancient history professor, she violently shook her head, asking as if I knew anything about something called an Ouroboros Library. Or perhaps the Library of Ouroboros. It wasn't entirely clear. Hopefully the common knowledge about the symbol. Taken from the Egyptians by the Greeks and from the Greeks by the medieval Europeans, a sign and alchemy of death and rebirth and so forth. The student continued shaking her head all through my explanation until she saw me coming off. Those are too old. The place where my dreams was a modern. There was electricity, computers, but everything seemed ancient and stink of old dust and dump, damp wood and something... Something else. Please don't you know if anything in recent times that might have stemmed from that idea. I confess that I had, especially considering the size and the many niches of the modern world. She left without another word, leaving her drawings behind. Something about the conversation shook me. I looked through the crude drawings made in a shaky hand and saw in, the, saw in the familiar shapes and designs an odd air of ominousness. Like looking at the facade of a dark building and hearing the slightest scratchings of things that shouldn't be just behind the stones. All very juvenile thoughts and yet when I went home that evening, I brought the drawings that can help but want to look more into what we discussed, into that library of Ouroboros. It was largely fruitless. I found many sites and articles on alchemy, the symbol itself, or the public library in Oboros, Oboros County, which was located somewhere in rural Wisconsin. But just as the hour crept past midnight, I found something. The slightest snatch of information at the bottom of a rabbit hole series of links. I will not repeat the website's domain on my steps to arrive there for fear that someone might try to replicate what I did, but I will repeat what I found. Because just as soon as get the ideas from her head without trying, I can't think of anything else. Waking or sleeping, I hope this will help. The library of Ouroboros, a kind of walking nightmare arrived upon by those too curious for their own good, rich in black secrets, rich in dark ideas lost to time, rich in languages from dead races on other planets, the fortunate die, the truly lucky, or perhaps the most unfortunate of all become tenders for all time, knowing far more than any living being could ever hope to learn, without becoming a permanent, perpetually screaming stain on the face of space-time forever. None have left it unscathed. There are forbidden tomes that would prevent you from bre breathing should you merely touch them. And the tenders are beyond sanity and jealousy that keeps their terrible secrets. You've searched enough. This is your final warning. That night I slept fitfully in my dreams beset by images of a dark, dusty place, eerie for its supposed normalcy. I could almost feel things passing just beneath the floorboards within the walls watching me. Every exit led to another room, nearing nearly the same as the ones before it, and out the window I saw only black. My dreams have been consistently disturbed since the last night, so much so that it's hard for me to teach. So heavily preoccupied is my waking mind, I hope this will writing will be enough to put my mind at ease. One last thing, I've since tried to find the student who first contacted me to tell her what I learned. My hope was that I might be able to put her mind at ease, or at least commiserate with her, but I haven't been able to find her. In fact, since the day she visited my office, her roommate hasn't seen her, nor has anyone else, and I fear I might be next. Okay, so, um... Uh... Hmm. Well, I really these coolest places. I don't know where they are. Yeah. It's okay. I could just stab the fucking light with my. Come on, guys. You gotta put out the trash. Uh, can you look at the numbers? Maybe the numbers. Miss? What do they mean? Wow, oh, man, shit. I don't know. I don't like that camera. I am heavily breathing. Holy shit. At least that's fun. Why is this thing not connected? How is the light? Is that another thing work? Okay. Officially don't know. 
what I'm doing here. There was a book standing up. Just mm, man, that's good. What is that thing? Is that there the entire time? It's not interactable. I just check all the stacks and stuff. That got me, dude. Oh man. Going for miles and miles and miles. It's night. I'm tired. So tired. Been on the road for what feels like days. Don't like this constant moving. Never have, but it wasn't this bad when I was younger. Could sleep in the car while my parents drove. Now I don't have anybody to drive me. Two things I got too caught up in some of the darker parts of our world. A black library by our old house. They went in and never came out. Or why I can't sleep. Their book. What I learned without prying as I opened the dusty thing, sitting seized as I cleaned out what remained of the attic. Didn't even mean to, and yet here we are. There've been no other cars for hours. This dark stretch of road, my truck, all I've known. As I drive along, a halo of red and blue neon forms in my windshield, a bastion in the dark, a tiny diner. I'm not hungry, I'm not thirsty, just tired. But all the same, I take the exit as it comes up, pulling into the parking lot behind between a beat-up jalopy and a truck that looks a lot like mine. I hardly feel the cold outside. I hardly feel anything. It's like being trapped in somebody else's body and things don't feel like they fit right into my muscles anymore. The den is just as cold as the outdoors, and hardly more inviting. The distressed red pleather of the bunch of boot of a bunch of boots that should have been trash years ago. Dirty tables, floors buffed into a mockery of cleanliness. Empty, but for a man in a heavy cow coat in one corner and a waitress in the other. The man is standing. The waitress is also standing. They look like a prize fighter, about to swear off what they would if they were looking at each other. Instead, I can't see that. Ma I can see the man's face for his collar and hat, and the woman is looking at me. Seat, sir. I nod. Rough weather out, she says, trying to smile to take my seat. I can tell I look terrible. Do you know a place where I can get some shut-eye? I ask almost without realizing it. I can't sleep, but maybe I can still try. Not a motel for miles. You can sleep at your table if you want, though. You don't have to order anything. Thank you. I set my head down on the table and my eyes don't shut. That black knowledge slithering its way into those stained pages and into my brain and out grips my eyelids, forcing them wider. The diner is sideways. I'm like this for a few minutes, then there's someone else standing sideways in front of me. That man in the coat, that coat. His face is a dark red mass. Sleep deprivation. Tired, buddy? I nod. The table is cold against my numb face. I think we can help each other out. He reaches towards my face, laying a hand upon my cheek. There's a flicker of feeling, a warmth that cuts through the fog that swallowed up my head for days. As he withdraws his hand, I see a strip of ragged flesh in it, which he brings to his face. When he lifts his hand again, the flesh is gone. Thanks, buddy. May I take a rest? I nod. The table is cold against my face, and as I finish nodding, he turns my head roughly and grabs it, pulling away another strip of red. There's feeling. Tiredness becomes more pronounced. He doesn't ask anymore. It just takes. Each time his hands come down, a little part of me leaves, but at the point, I don't much care. Take it all. I like to rest. The table has turned red like the seats around us. Time passes. Feeling's gone. Sleep. The man in the coat takes down his collar, and I see my face looking down at me, tired. He reaches down into my pocket, fishes out my keys. Rest easy, buddy, he says, and something else that I don't hear. He's gone. It all is. Okay, well, there's a flashlight, apparently. Okay. Well, I don't like that, because that implies things are going to be dark. At a point, I'm going to need to look at a flashlight. God, that, that clicked me. What time is it? Maybe the time is the code? It's... No, it can't be. That's like... Yeah, it's too many digits. There's four digits. My god, Gary? No. Oh. Hmm. It's 
window looks maybe broken. Oh no, maybe not. Let's see. Oh shit. Zero, two, five. Is there something else? Four. Four zero two five. Four zero two five. Let's help. Let's see if there's one more. Four zero two five. Ooh, okay. I don't like that. You know, when you when you do something in the game and then the that's actually really clever. I noticed a spelling error and then it didn't hit me. Okay, I'm gonna go look at that again, and I'm gonna keep my dude. Ambient noise has got me. I can't feel it before. Left terrible reality. Left one four one zero two. Left one. Oh, I appreciate the brother. Thank you, V. Four one zero two. Hmm? We've given you chances. Ample warning. You proceed, we threaten. No. Continue on your current path, and they will find nothing left of your head. We swear it. For the last and final time, go back from whence you came. I want to. Brother. I'm trying to leave. Okay, we're I think we're gonna call it for this episode. Um it's the last boogie. Um so if you like the content, uh please like, comment, and subscribe. Um if you don't like it. Uh, let me know what you don't like. Please comment. Let me know. You know, I'm, I'm always down to, to read good criticism and find out what I can do to make the viewing experience better and stuff. Um, this game's spooky. Um, but otherwise, uh, thanks. I'm spooky. Um, I'll see you next one.